So community-based organizations have played a critical role in improving the health and education and social and economic justice of the local immigrant community and serving those in need throughout the Queens neighborhoods. So tell us about your visions and plans to proliferate and strengthen underfunded, under-resourced, small to medium-sized Asian American nonprofit organizations like us uh, that have been effectively and efficiently serving this community. Uh, we'll start with you, Richard. You know, I was one of the, when I was working at Asian Americans for Equality, uh, as the uh, policy advocate and lead organizer, you know, we started what was called at the time the 12% and growing coalition. And we called it the 12% and growing coalition because Asian Americans represented 12% of the of New York City's population. So more Asian Americans living in New York City than the entire population of San Francisco. But at that time, we were receiving our uh, Asian led and Asian serving nonprofit organizations. We're receiving less than half of 1%, not even 1%, half of 1% of city funding dollars. And so in order to change this uh, dialogue, we were advocating on increasing services and increasing support for our nonprofit organization and, uh, and asking for greater support and greater access to discretionary dollars and capital dollars. Now, over the last several years, uh, the, or the advocacy movement has grown and we're able to now, uh, I think it's at 2.5% of city funding, but it's only still 2.5%. Uh, Asian American organizations are in a uh, unique situation because uh, we're not uh, we're not bounded by a single language, and so even uh, for individuals in the Chinese community, you know they have to serve uh, services in what, Mandarin, Cantonese, Toisanese, Shanghainese, Beijing, and so you know just one organization is having to do multilingual services and multicultural services. And so because of those reasons, we have to have better access and more access to resources. As city council member, I think I wanna continue a lot of the advocacy work that I did before and ensuring that nonprofit organizations know how to access these dollars and know uh, what they have to do to prepare and get qualified for these funding dollars. It's something that I've been doing regularly over the last seven years as budget director, trying to increase the number of dollars coming into nonprofit organizations that serve Asian American communities. And as a council member, I think uh, being in a position, I can advance that language, understanding specifically uh, the needs of our community, because it's something that I've been doing for the last 15 years as a public servant. That's a very niche question, so I don't know if I'm as uh, apt to answer it, but once I'm elected, I think I'm going to hire Richard to be my guy to help me uh, figure out what what, what nonprofits we're going to get money to. But the city council does have discretionary funding. I do think that an overall goal of any city councilman should be trying to pair the very profitable, um, and I'm not talking profitable money, I'm talking profitable with uh, the sense of work being done, um, non-for-profits with city agencies. And I think that's a partnership that should expand because ultimately, if, especially non-for-profits. We want non-for-profits to be run by um, philanthropic societies that are incentivized to give and that give to um, organizations that truthfully help people, right? So the city is actually not very good at spending money, but non-for-profits like you guys are. You're, you're, you're good custodians of the wealth that are entrusted, that is entrusted to you. So it would be, from my position, more beneficial to find several good organizations and see if we can get them to be prominent within the community and then ultimately um, pull them into a city, uh, a civic, private and, civ and public sector um, partnership. I wouldn't be, I, I'm not an expert at Asian non for profit so I would be lying to you if I told you which ones I knew about um, to be very successful and which ones I didn't. But um, being in the city council, I would try my best, especially being in such a Korean heavy community in District 19, to make sure that it's an equitable distribution of funds that are allocated to the city council. One of my first jobs in government was working for a former congressman, Gary Ackerman, um, in this area, and I served as his liaison to community boards, to civics associations, and to our small business community. I helped them apply for federal grants and loans. I helped them access programs, and then I went on to work as a senior official for the uh, New York City Council's budget division um, under the former council finance chair, David Weprin, where my job literally was helping groups from Northeast Queens, particularly 
nonprofit organizations better mm-hmm. access budget. I've also continued to do that um, uh, with my capacity in the private sector running a government relations firm that has seen how daunting the procurement, the contracting, the solicitation process is. So I think we need to set up small business portals, um, nonprofit mm-hmm. portals, and have a much greater dialogue and communication. Every um, nonprofit organization should be assigned a, uh, a liaison to the appropriate city agencies, whether we're talking about senior services, housing, healthcare, or transportation. There are funds that can be accessed and there are programs that are applicable and they should have a caseworker specifically working with them to help them get access. I would also commit to having a significant portion of the capital and expense budget that as a council member, I would have control over giving out specifically designated to Asian American run nonprofit organizations. I've worked with a lot of them, Nanshan Senior Center and others um, in and around the district. And I think that it is critically important that we continue to grow their access and make sure that they have every tool at their disposal. And the most important tool is responsiveness and communication. When I was in the Senate, I tried to allocate the monies and I did towards some of the Korean and Chinese uh, nonprofit organizations. I think what needs to be done, and I would introduce legislation in the city council, that there's a yearly uh, um, analysis of the city budget to see what groups are getting funding and how that relates to the general population. And I think uh, it will show that Korean and Chinese organizations based upon the population of the city is not getting its fair share. And in that, once those studies show that, then the, the legislation would require changes in the city budget. And, and that would be one of the first pieces of legislation that I would introduce in the city council. This would ensure that Korean and Chinese organizations are getting their fair share representative of the population in terms of city services and city dollars. As for the final question before we wrap up the session for District 19, please share your final thoughts on your plans and commitment on advancing social and economic opportunities for Korean and other Asian families in our community. What can we expect from you that we can't, we can't, we can't expect from other candidates in your district? Well, I'll, I'll make it short. Uh, I am not a politician. I have not worked in city government for decades. I am a small business owner. I'm a teacher. I was born and raised in this district. And I can say that rising tides raise all ships. So my goal is to be a city councilman for all of District 19, from Greek Americans, Italian Americans, Korean Americans, Chinese Americans, because ultimately a healthy district, a safe district, a clean district is what we're all looking for while we're here chasing our own little bit of the American dream. We want to make sure that our kids go to competent schools that are well-funded, that we can walk on clean, safe streets, and that if we walk all the way to the supermarket, we have enough money to afford something while we're there and be safe walking back. So um, in, in that respect, I wish to be a champion of the small business community here in District 19, the middle class mom and pops, the first, second generation Americans or newly minted Americans who are coming here for a better life. We all share that in common. And if we make a neighborhood that is reflective of all our needs, then we will be in a good position to lead the city forward into the next 100 years of greatness. As we come out of this pandemic, especially the economic perspective of it, you know, we need a council member who not only is going to be able to go in and understand the nuances of city government and understand how to govern uh, uh, through the bureaucratic red tape, it's also important to have resources uh, and the relationships uh, with individuals. And I believe that um, somebody who's coming in with the right experience uh, with my work history and the uh, right relationships with the community, as well as those in city government. And doing that, we'll be able to immediately hit the ground and find the access to individuals that we need to provide in this post-pandemic world. You know, we, our district, we get about $2,000 less per student uh, in our schools compared to the rest of the city. We only have three city-funded senior centers we receive the least amount of senior funding. Uh, we have uh, the fewest amount of dollars coming in for youth services. We don't even have a Beacon Center. Um, and so when we talk about how we're going to recover, uh, it's about these things. Having somebody as a council member who has the right experience, the right uh, relationships so that we can come in immediately and start solving a lot of these issues. 
um, for the Korean American community, Asian American community, I think it is important that we have a person come in and uh, represent uh, and understand the cultural and linguistic needs of the community um, because it's a unique community. We live in a area um, that is uh, very diverse um, and is nearly 40% uh, minority. And so coming into this, having that understanding of how to address a lot of these issues and interconnect uh, individuals and groups with government that hasn't been interconnected before, I think is a unique challenge and something that I am looking forward to doing. Experience matters. And, and my experience as a council member, as a state senator has given me the knowledge of how to manipulate government and get the most resources out of government for the Asian and Chinese community, which I've done in those roles, but I'd like to do in an in ever increasing role in the city council. City council is the local person. They are the one who really responsible for the everyday life that we all face. And I've always been that hands-on person and I look forward, hopefully with uh, your support, to get reelected and work with the Chinese and Korean communities in an ever greater fashion than I've done in the past. And I wanna thank you again for hosting this forum. The reason that I'm running is, is pretty simple. It's actually twofold. I'm a father and I'm a son. Um, I grew up in the district. I'm now raising my two young sons, age five and age almost five months uh, as of this evening. And I wanted to do anything I could to give back to anything, to anyone that I could. I was born and raised here. I've experienced a lot of the same issues that families are experiencing now. Um, housing affordability, tax issues, working and owning a small business myself, having worked in government and frankly having seen what's worked and what's and what has not worked. You know, the COVID recovery has not been equal and has not been across the board. And to the extent possible, I want to help all of the families in our district, particularly those that are most vulnerable and those that have been left out and left behind from our COVID recovery process. Thank you all very much. Um, this rest, wraps up the New York City Council Member Election District 19 Meet the Candidates Forum. Uh, Community Inclusion and Development Alliance would like to thank all the candidates who participated in today's forum. We wish you the best of luck on your campaign. Good luck. Mm -hmm.